Hello, welcome to CEO's Projects. Today I'm going to show you why this oscilloscope that I pulled from the garbage is really awesome. So to start off, this is a Tektronix TDS-460A. It was made in the late 90s and it has a dot matrix screen which we'll get to later. But to, sum it, to start off, this I pulled from the garbage. This was just laying out ready to be recycled and thankfully the person who was about to throw it out let me take it home. So I use this a bunch of times, it's fully functional. I actually have bought some expansion cards for this which I'll show you later. But to start off, let's just turn it on. Now I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but when it turns on, the, there it actually since this is such an old model, it actually has a fan built in. This is effectively a small computer and it's really cool. You'll see why we have this monitor in a few minutes. And I can tell you it's still usable today, but you would have to spend quite a bit of money to connect it to any actual computer. So it's gonna take a while to boot up. And then once it boots up, you should be able to hear a few clicking noises, which are the actual relays on the inside of them. And we'll actually get to hopefully look at those relays if we can find them inside of here. Those were the relays. Well, one of the cool things, which I'll show you right now, is that this, that this has a built-in video expansion port. So, as you can see, if you can't see it on here, you can see it on here. So as you can see here, obviously the date and time is fairly incorrect. That's probably the last time they used it. It has just a normal dot matrix screen. And it's funny because that dot matrix is actually shown on here. But if we were to go and use a signal generator, which we have right here, or function generator, we can go and take the signal and actually capture it on something like this, which using a v, uh, VGA to HDMI capture card, we should be able to capture. So right now what we're going to do is we're gonna hook up one of our signal probes and we are going to go and see what this looks like on the actual dot matrix screen. So right now we have it hooked up because I had to test it before I started filming. I'm gonna turn it on. And so it's currently set to a, if this wants to actually stay up, up, there you go, that fell off. Come on. So this is set to a 10,000 kilohertz sine wave, or Sorry, 100,000 kilohertz sine wave, or 1,000 hertz sine wave. So, so I just pressed the auto set function, which should allow us to easily see. Okay, so now we're seeing a waveform, and now we just need to hone it in. It's not the prettiest, but it's something. Now this is not a very expensive uh, signal generator, so it's not gonna look the greatest. So that was the sine wave, now let's see what it looks like for a square wave. As you can see, it's not the greatest, and I don't exactly remember how to make it look a huge amount better, specifically with this oscilloscope. So here you can see we have a triangle wave at the 100,000 hertz and it's reading it pretty well. It's reading it well within the range. It's reading it from, let's actually see, measure. And as you can see, it has all these different functions on it. High and low. So, so I sort of messed up this part. What you're gonna see is that the voltage high is 260 millivolts and the voltage low is 240 millivolts and the good part about this is that it's reading a positive and negative absolute value and since and that's really helpful because it means that it's actually reading the signal generator correctly if the cell high was too much in other words it was 500 millivolts with a negative 240 millivolt low it means that the total positive and total negative are out of range. The range is supposed to be set to 260 millivolts, so having it be within that range is really good. I really messed up trying to explain this here, so <laughs> this is just me uh, recording this while editing. 
All right, so now that we see that it has captured the high, which 260 millivolts, and low, negative 240 millivolts, we're gonna see what's actually inside of this type of machine. So now that we have these screws out, I'm just gonna show you before we take this thing apart, what actually would come with this Tektronix for TDS460A. So to start off, we have software for it. This is scope data management software. Don't know, I haven't really used it yet. I've only used the WaveStar, which is what you actually use it with. And then, oops, sorry, I almost just dropped that. Uh, another thing, but on five and a quarter inch floppy, which I have yet to test that just because I don't have something that can read five and a quarter inch. I have an adapter that can read normal stuff, but not uh, five and a quarter inch. Some, it looks like plastic baggies or, uh, or latex baggies. I don't know what material these are for it looks like either floppy drives or just hard disk drives, which you don't think, well, you can't put a hard disk drive in here. Well, it actually has one inside of it already. Uh, it comes with a DocuWave software tutorial. Comes with instructions for how, on how to use the probes. Uh, more, uh, well, it looks like it's just a thank you for the Tektronix stuff. More, in, more uh, instructions. And this, which is the actual software that you would use with one of the uh, uh, expansion cards back here to actually go and look at the software. So it comes with, this I think is just an extra random floppy disk, but these two are the actual WaveStar uh, software. In other words, this is what you would connect to your computer so that you could actually connect this to your computer and work with it, which it's pretty cool. I have done it before, but I had to give the cord back because the cord was $3,000. So. Yeah, and unless I plan to solder one, which there's like 18 different things on here, and it's a GPIB port, I don't think I'm gonna be able to connect to this. So let's take this off and put it to the side temporarily. Let's take these screws, put them in my pocket so we don't lose them. And let's take this and let's move you to a different angle. All right, so we're now at a different angle. I'm gonna we're gonna take this thing apart. So first. We slide off the back plate because we, we just took out all these screws. Then that allows us to slide out this leather pouch, which I do have to say, it's very nice and I do love the color. Most of these that you find don't have the leather pouch still on them because they're either uh, cut, torn, or just they just don't have them. So now, this carrying bar, we're going to take this, we're going to flip it up so that we can take out this screw. Thankfully, all the screws on the outside utilize the same uh, screwdriver, which is a T15 bit. So, put that one out. There you go. And we push it out forwards. Now, by the way, in the meantime, I actually did discharge this. I just wanted to say that. So, as you can see, none of the relays are done. They're clicking. So. Oh, it is warm though. Here, let's put it on its face for a quick second. There you go. And just a look at it from here. So that is a cathode ray tube with, I have no clue if that's a vacuum tube or not. It sort of looks like it, but all I know is that this is cathode ray because some of the stuff actually says on here uh, emergency don't use so specifically which I find really cool right there it actually says that all of the x-ray uh, uh, rays are actually sufficiently shielded so that's why I'm not going to be taking this any more apart than just showing hey look this is what is this is what's in here we have a 2 watt fan the 12 volt uh, 0.16 and fan we have the uh, what do you call it we have the uh, projection screen or the, and the cathode ray tube, a bunch of internal electronics. Uh, I'm trying to see anything more interesting. No, not necessarily. So now we get to the cool part. So here, here are the expansion cards. Let's actually take this out. Now. I will admit that this did not come with all the expansion cards in here. It actually only came with one, which was the one that's needed for the 
thing to actually function in the first place. So this one is the graphics card, which, I mean, it is technically a graphics card since it outputs two graphics. And let's just quickly pop it out, just make sure we're not connected to anything else. You know what? It's connected to five different things, so I'm just gonna pop you off. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So, as you can see inside there, if you can see inside there, come on, focus. It's just a bunch of hand soldered, or maybe not hand soldered, but soldered on boards, nothing really interesting. No relays, nothing. And that is what it outputs. It just has VGA. So actually, something that's really cool, which I'll temporarily pop this back on, is that it actually tells you exactly what you need. So as you can see, it tells you exactly video, GPIB, which this is the really expensive one that I would have to spend about $3,000 for a GPIB to USB cord, RS-232 port, and a printer port, which it says electronics compatible, but when you go and look, it's just all printers. So the two thing, so the one thing that came with the two cards, which is this one, which I'm pretty sure is just a computational card, which allows you to do more math, which it did come from college, so I'm not surprised. Also, here's just a quick view of the backside. A heck of a lot of stuff. And the weird thing is right there, that's an IDE 40 pin connector. I know, cause I uh, was able to use one of my cords to connect certain stuff. I also have no clue what that is, that this main part right there, but it's a mystery that we'll never know. So the two cards that, did, so these two cards actually came with it. All these three did not. So I bought the RS-232 port, the RS-232 card to see if I could get it to function, which that also came with the printer port. And as you can see, these use EISA or extended, if you want to focus, extended ISA ports, which I actually do have a DC to DC uh, adapter, but I'm way too afraid to plug it into here because I don't want to brick this thing. I mean, you can actually see how damaged some of these things are. I mean, look at that. The FET is literally at an angle. So, yeah, I mean, they're not really interesting. They're standard cards, but for me, it's pretty cool being able to actually add more to your already functioning oscilloscope. And they have these batteries, which surprisingly still work. They actually are able to maintain the same date and time. So that's really it for the internals of this thing. It's more just old tech, nothing really crazy. But I actually will mention one thing, because I know this from certain metal, uh, not metal detectors, smoke detectors. I am 95% sure that that is what creates the x-rays. That tube right there, that plastic tube right there, because it's shielded in a specific way away from everything else. So, yeah, and I'm sorry if the audio is weird, the microphone is pointed at the thing. So let's now go and talk about why I love this type of stuff and why you should go for these types of machines instead of the newer types. So while this is a older model of oscilloscope and it still does function, you might say, well, why should I buy it? I could get a new oscilloscope for $300 and it would function perfectly fine and I would have literally zero problems and it comes with the most updated stuff. And that is true. I was thinking myself about buying one of the, buying an oscilloscope. But the main thing is, this was free. This was pulled from the garbage. This taught me how to use oscilloscopes. Now I did learn in school how to use oscilloscopes, but this showed me what you really can and can't do with oscilloscopes. And that's sort of why I love old tech like this. It's old. This thing, it's been working since the 90s. This is almost 30 years old, and everything still works in here. Meanwhile, new stuff nowadays, if you don't software update it, it can sometimes break itself. So, it just, this, these te this tech, it's made perfect. It was made, I don't wanna say with love, but it was made back at a time where you needed super reliable stuff to work. And if you didn't get it to work, well, you were out of luck. So, that's why I love tech like this. You get to save, and reuse tech that people don't need. Like for example, my school throws out a lot of technology just because it's old. Sometimes it's not functional, but mo majority of the time it's just old. And the problem with that is, there are certain people like me who would be happily, would happily want to take this tech because I don't have stuff of my own. My power supply, 
I got from the school because it was broken and wouldn't go back together. So I took it, I fixed it, and for some reason, this doesn't want to go in. So, so getting back to what I was saying, this type of tech, it's old, but it functions. And most times, it's free. If you go to your local workshop or your local whoever and say, hey, I want to work, I want to do some stuff, I can't afford an oscilloscope right now, or I can't afford a power supply right now, they definitely have these types of things. And they might be willing just to give, it, give them to you for free. Because it's old tech that nobody uses anymore. But if you can find a use for it, it's really awesome. I mean, I have some really old stuff that I still use to this day. Old tech, like uh, for example, the 3200XS, an old, old computer, I use it for testing old stuff and old hardware. And I actually use it to connect to certain stuff like this. So, in other words, to end this all, if you like old tech, and you don't mind using old tech, you just care about the functionality, these types of things, old oscilloscopes, old tools, old everything, are perfect for you. So you, I would suggest, go find someone who has old tech and say, hey, can I borrow this? And they'll probably say yes. So I'm looking at this after editing it and I realized that I talked way too much saying the same things over and over. So I just cut that little bit out and brought it all the way to the end. So if you're still watching, thank you so much. And now back to me in the past. While I'm screwing this in, I'm gonna wish you a good week. And I will see you next Sunday, 8 a.m. usual time. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.